Sometimes defeat is the best beginning. Why? Well, for one, if you're at the very bottom, there's only one way to go. Up. But more importantly, if you're flat on your back, mentally and financially, you'll usually become sufficiently disgusted to reach way down deep inside yourself and pull out miracles. Pull out talents and pull out abilities and pull out desires and determination. When you're flat broke or flat miserable, you'll eventually become so disgusted that you'll pull out the basic essentials required to make everything better. And it's in the face of adversity that things begin to change, that you begin to change. With enough disgust, desire, and determination to change your life, you'll start saying, I've had it. Enough of this. No more. Never again. Here's where the miracle begins. I've had it. Enough. No more. Never again. These words and these thoughts really rattle the power of time and fate and circumstances. And these three things, time and fate and circumstances, all get together and say, Okay, okay. We can see that we have no power here. We're facing some major resolve. This guy's not going to give up. He's had it. He's done with all this nonsense. We better step aside and let this guy get by. Resolve. Inspiration through disgust. But a lot of people don't change themselves. They wait for change. Circumstances to change. The government to change. Life to change. What'll that do? Not much. These poor unfortunate folks accept their defeats and wallow in their self-pity. Why? Because they refuse to take control of the situation. They refuse to take control of their life, their career, their health, their relationships, their finances. They refuse to take control and take responsibility and get sufficiently disgusted to change it. But if you are disgusted, if you are making changes, if this program finds you in the middle of your own personal slump, then I have some words to offer you. Your present failure is a temporary condition. It is only a temporary condition. You will rebound from failure just as surely as you gravitated into failure. Somebody once suggested to me in a bout of failure that I should tell myself that this too shall pass. I firmly believe that you're only given as much as you can handle, as much negativity, as much failure, as much disappointment. This too shall pass if you grasp for a new beginning, if you pull yourself up and move back into the world with a plan. So as foolish as it might sound, be thankful for your current limitations or failures, for they are building blocks from which to create greatness. You can go where you want to go. You can do what you want to do. You can become what you want to become. You can do it all, starting now, starting right where you are. A father talks about his daughter. She's gone through some pretty tough times. And as he tells it, she's a pretty tough person. He has a unique way of describing his daughter's situation, though. While most parents would be frantic, even of their kids who are grown and gone, this man just smiles and says that his daughter is like a frog in a jar of cream. She keeps kicking and kicking and kicking and pretty soon the milk will turn into a lump of butter and she'll be able to jump out. That's an interesting way to look at it. An interesting illustration of tenacity, but that's how it works. You've got to keep trying and trying and trying. You've got to have enough resolve to do it until... So be grateful for adversity. But for your future, make it work for you, not against you. Make your failures give birth to great opportunity, not prolonged agony. Make your disgust lead to inspiration, not depression. The world will willingly sit by and let you wallow in your sorrows until you die broke and alone. And here's what else the world will do. The world will step aside and let you by. Once you decide that your present situation is only temporary, once you decide to get back on your feet and make your mark, the world doesn't care which choice you make to stop here or to go on. The world doesn't really care. So you have to. You have to care. 
In your own enlightened self-interest, give a run at adventure. Keep your eyes firmly on the achievement, on your ambition, and not merely existence and self-pity. Make a commitment to excellence. Success is something you attract by the person you become. Success is not something you pursue. What you pursue usually eludes you like a butterfly, something you go after that you can't catch. Success is something you attract like a magnet by the person you become. To attract attractive people, we've talked about this before. To attract attractive people, you must be attractive. To attract powerful people, you must be powerful. To attract committed people, you must be committed. Instead of going to work on them, you go to work on yourself. You work harder on yourself than you work on the job. And if you become, you can attract. The whole key is to make yourself valuable. The key is to make yourself attractive. The key is to make yourself skillful, competent, willing, powerful, unique, sophisticated, cultured, being able to manage, in control, healthy. The whole key really to the future is personal development. Because the greatest gift you can give to someone else is your personal development, self-development, self-investment. The greatest gift you can give is your own personal development. If I become 10 times wiser, 10 times stronger, 10 times brighter, 10 times more competent, think of what that will do for my success. If I grow, think of what that will do for my future. Self-development earns success. Self-investment earns respect. And the only way to make a better and better and better investment in your future is to become better and stronger and wiser and more competent. And the more attractive you become, the more attractive you are. And the more attractive you are, the more you attract success. Self-development, self-investment attracts success. That's powerful. Now here's what would be pitiful if your income grew and you didn't grow. Because here's what usually happens. If your income takes some jumps, it's best that you grow quickly up to where your income is. Why? Because otherwise your income will soon come back to where you are. Somebody once said, if someone hands you a million dollars, best you become a millionaire so you get to keep the money. I'm telling you, success doesn't want to hang around an incompetent person. That's the problem with winning the lottery, the lack of self-development to be able to master it and keep it. And now the fortune is bigger than the person, rather than the person being bigger than the fortune. If you're a parent, Use that as a challenge to grow personally. Use the challenge of parenting to grow. See what you can become. One ancient writer said this, Here are some reassuring words. God's arm is not short. Aren't those reassuring words? God's arm is not short. You can't think of anything more pitiful than a God with a short arm. Poor God, his arm's too short. He can't reach all the way can't reach out to all of us. This writer said, no, be reassured. God's arm is not short. He can reach all the way and he can reach everybody. Shouldn't that be said of every father, of every mother? They can reach all of their children. They can reach all the way. They don't lack stories and illustrations. They don't lack wisdom and power. And the only way you can become that kind of parent, the only way you can keep up that process is by personal development, by becoming better than you are, stronger than you are, wiser than you are, becoming, becoming, growing, so that your investment grows. As your children grow, you grow. Your power grows, your influence grows, your wisdom grows, your command of the language grows. You see, that's what's challenging, to be involved in a situation that makes you grow if that situation is success, keep growing to be bigger than your fortune. If that situation is failure, keep growing until you're bigger than the problem. Keep growing, keep becoming, keep doing it until.